Welcome to the Visionary Chronicles, a business strategy podcast where we provide insight to those looking for creative, executable strategies built around the latest disruptive ideas, innovative cultures, product creators, and marketing solutions. Welcome to the Visionary Chronicles. Today we're going to move back into the product side of the brand and talk about creativity. And what I talk about is how to build and maximize creativity. You know, creativity is not normally a word that's thrown around inside of an organization that makes it more innovative, more disruptive. But clearly, creativity is a cognitive asset of a team that allows you to foresee the future before it's realized. And so when you look at creativity, it's a great word and, and one that I find very interesting when you talk with leaders in the industry as well as companies and brands that we work with. And as a matter of fact, back in uh, 2018, actually, LinkedIn had this study that was done, which is pretty interesting. They said that creativity was the most in-demand soft skill. And you know, the interesting thing is everybody says, oh, I'm innovative, I'm disruptive, but nobody says, hey, I'm really creative. You know. This is normally to those poets, those artists out there in the industry that says, hey, I'm very creative. Not always do you hear this from product people. So I thought it was quite interesting that, that leaders were utilizing the word creativity. So in 2017, actually, the two traits that were in highest demand were innovation and creativity. Um, the interesting thing is, although in high demand, 77% of leaders within the industry found that this was the traits that were the hardest to find. Um, so the, the, in talking about creativity, the, the interesting side of it is it's not logical talent. It's cognitive talent, meaning that it's imagination, it's creativity, it's things that are inherent to the left side versus the right side of the brain. So Creativity is a hard one to put your finger on until somebody's actually inside the organization and they're succeeding. So when we talk about creativity, what I say, it's a cornerstone for being an innovative thinker. It's an interesting way of putting it because innovation is driven by creativity and the ability for you to flex that cognitive side of your brain. And so the ability to conceptually build ideas and find potential solutions through a thought process is a trait few possess. And what I mean by that is that being able to put ideas in your head, fortunately, and I'm very uh, blessed to, to have this talent where I can actually put things in my head and work it out and see what it's gonna look like and then put pen to paper and actually commercialize it. So um, there's very few people that have that cognitive side of their brain and the creativity side where they conceptually have these ideas and they can actually build this idea in their head, put it down on paper, and then if it makes sense, commercialize it. So it's an interesting trait to have, but very few possess that talent. And the other side of this is um, this trait, although great, can't stand alone in creativity. So in creating an innovative culture, rather. So with creativity, which is a pillar of an innovative culture, and part of that foundation, you must also possess what we call an artistry around your ideas. And what I mean by this is when you look at Apple as a great example of when Steve came back and he was looking at how do we bring the culture back to Apple? It was done through what he called artists and creative artists, those that can hand draw, those that can think of ideas in their head be able to understand what the future looks like, make things simple, let the engineers make it sophisticated. So when you look at this, the artistry around creativity, the culture and innovation are all pieces of that puzzle and the foundation of making your culture creative. Um, and the artist is one who knows what the painting looks like before a brush is put to the canvas. I think that's just a great way of thinking about an artist is that they have to visually see what this thing looks like before it's complete. And that's really what creativity is. When you talk about product people, great companies that are able to come up with this innovate, what I call this innovation pipeline, surf this thing for generations. 
it's really a culture inherent to creativity and the artistry around being a creative thinker. So having this ability to have and see what things look like before they're finished, you know, being able to see the end result before putting a brush to the canvas is really a cool way of thinking about it. And so when you look at these cultures and the cultures inside a brand, you know, how do they build this innovative, creative culture, attract artists that want to come to your company and be part of your brand? How do you build this creative culture? And I get this question many, many times with Liquid Mind when we're working with brands because it's inherently a brand that is a company that wants to be a brand and or a brand that is no longer a brand that wants to become a brand again. Now, I know that's a mouthful, but it's interesting. And the, probably the best analogy I use of that was Puma. And, you know, Puma went through that cycle of being a great brand, competing with Adidas, part of that, what I call La Familia of having dealt with Adi Dossler and the brothers. And when you looked at Puma, it, uh, it well, when they first started out, they were a premium brand. And then the brand got degraded. It went into channels where it shouldn't have been. And really the band equity was erased. The company went away for many years. And then it now has come back and it's come back very strong. And, and I always say I can count the number of brands that are successful like Puma that have been premium at one point went away, degraded brand equity, and came back and had effectively the same brand equities they had before when they left. There's so few of them out there, and it's so challenging to be able to achieve that that very few have done it. And it's just best to have a process in place in the first place where you're not degrading brand equity. You have a culture and a process that's built around creativity and artists and innovation. So what does that look like? So what I've done is I kind of penned out a few things here for, for us to talk about today. You know, when I look at that creative culture inside of these great iconic brands, Oakley, Apple, whatever it happens to be, you know, all of these brands, Nike, Adidas, Puma, you know, the first thing that they do is they have this free flowing ideas and what I call pace. You know, many times what I find with those companies that are not brands and or those that are trying to build brand equity through their products in the marketplace to command a premium price point, they don't have this free flowing ideas. They have what they classically call an ideation process, a product commercialization platform. And I'm not saying that you do away with dates. Clearly, I'm a big believer and having led brands and companies where you need to have a schedule and stick to that schedule and have the team understand it's critical that you do so. But you need to ensure that you have free flowing ideas and it's not disrupted. Disrupted in the wrong way. Meaning that people are disrupting the time you have for free flowing ideas and the pace around those ideas. And the pace means not commercializing an idea for the sake of timing. So you want to make sure that you have sufficient time through this ideation process because this is the future of your company. It's the future of your brand. And so many companies, I'm absolutely shocked in talking to leaders, don't recognize that the schedule isn't what makes your company. It's your brand. And the brand is built around product and your culture and the ability for you to create innovative products a substantial point of difference over your competition and in the marketplace with a supply and demand curve where you've got products along the entire cycle. So that is a huge challenge. So what do I mean by free flowing ideas and pace? And so what, what I find is that many people feel the quicker a decision is made, the better. And I say creativity needs to be free flowing and it needs to be nurtured. So you want to make sure, certainly, you've got a window, whether it be a month, not a day. And so when you look at this, you need to make sure that you have not only the process in place, the free-flowing ideas, but you're not continually disrupted in the wrong way by people that barge through the door asking where you're at in the process and disrupting the flow 
of what you're going through to build an innovation platform. So I say, take your time in finding solutions. You know, look at solutions and work towards a final decision. You know, you can't have, and I've been with brands where all they do is throw darts at a board and they never come up with a final decision. Now that's not a strategy either. So I'm not saying you don't have a strategy, but this all begins and ends with product. So make sure that whatever you're commercializing on your product is right for the brand, commands a leadership role, keeps you in a premium position, and allows you to sustain that leadership for generations. So leave the door open, allow ideas to enter, just ensure the ideas are flowing from those who carry the torch, what I call this cognitive creativity trait, and those that understand what the future looks like and they can see it. So that's number one, free-flowing ideas and pace. Number two is this illusion of only the smart are allowed into this creativity process. And the interesting thing was you look in the right and left-hand side of the brain, I talk about logic versus cognitive. Now, they are split. There are some, these visionaries, that have both, and they can flex both sides of the brain, and it's absolutely amazing when they do that. But very often, in the most instances, either you're going to have a cognitive leadership through creativity, innovation, imagination, or you're going to have this logic, engineer, operations, finance, whatever it happens to be, it's very black and white for them. But when you look at cognitive, it's cloudier. It's gray. It's not black and white. So you want to make sure that traditionally the smartest aren't always the ones that are going to be on the cognitive or creativity side of ideation. So creativity is cognitive and why logic may not always be the best character trait in building an innovative culture. So be aware of that. You don't always have to be the smartest person in the room to be able to have great ideas. And having intelligence is often misplaced within brands. And it's crushed creativity as a result of that. And so you want to make sure you're careful with defining, you know, what this creativity trait looks like. So it's those that see what should be, not what is. And it's detrimental to a creative culture. And I'll give you a great example. And it was one that was um, brought up during the Pixar purchased by Steve. And Pixar had brilliant people inside of the company, and they still do. But the problem was they had this clash between cognitive and logical. And so what was happening was they had all these brilliant artists and these brilliant engineers clashing, but never a decision being made. So they were failing to see the vision of a blockbuster. So what was happening is that there were all of these, what they, what Steve would call these negatives, you know, well, we can't do that because we can't do that because, and all these great ideas were being squashed and crushed at Pixar. So what Steve did is he came up with this, what he called plus. So whenever you have a minus, meaning that you're talking about a negative, it can't be done. He wanted to hear the other side. Why can't we do it? So just that simple implementation of cognitive bridging over to logic allowed Pixar to create Toy Story and the rest is history. So that when you look at this only smart illusion is, is the second one. The third is the more the better. And what I mean by the more is that more people in the room, the better. That is, by design, a miserable failure. Unless you have similar character traits, those that understand the creativity process, those that have an imagination, those that are artists, those that are cognitive, the logic can come in once the cognitive thinking is done. So many people feel that the more people involved, the better in the ideation process. You know, and actually it's more beneficial to have less with creativity trait than to have those with logic trait. So you want to make sure that you're careful how many people you have in that room in the creative process. And it kind of goes back to have their free flowing of ideas. You can't have free flowing of ideas if you have a clash in the character traits inside of the room. 
So group ideation stifles creativity many, many times. So you want to, you don't want to promote this indecision culture and by design, what it does is it leads to this frustration inside of the company and inside of the brand. So when you look at this creativity process, implementation of this process on creativity, I've given you three areas and explained what it looks like. So if you want to have a implementation and you're a leader of a company and a brand, embrace risk, embrace creativity, but understand what creativity is. It's not always this logic of trying to figure out ways to reduce risk. There's ways to reduce risk, but there's always ways to understand risk. Know you have to take it, but just learn how to limit the risk. But don't stifle creativity. That's a detriment to your company, to your brand, to your team, and your long-term success. So what I say is that most, if not all, leaders agree innovation and creativity are the two most desired traits. traits. But most do nothing to promote creating a culture where these cognitive thinkers can thrive. Make sure you're not a leader inside of your brand that doesn't embrace risk and doesn't embrace cognitive thinking and creativity as a result of making that decision. I wanted to thank you for listening to the Visionary Chronicles podcast and Hopefully you find the information that we put out each week very useful. And what we found through reviews and when we were originally putting together their visionary podcast was found both personal and professional um, advice as well as information those listening to the podcast were looking for. So we wanted to be unique in that way and hopefully you found that to be the case. And Appreciate the reviews that you've been sending in, and we would certainly appreciate you signing up for our newsletter as well, which is an expansion upon what you're seeing on or hearing on the the Visionary Chronicles podcast. And you can find that at two locations. One is briansmeltzer.com, B-R-Y-A-N-S-M-E-L-T-Z-E-R.com, or our company site, liquidmindsite.com, L-I-Q-U-I-D-M-I-N-D, site, S-I-T-E dot com. So we would appreciate any reviews, additional reviews, comments you may have. Sign up for the newsletter, and we look forward to talking with you next week.